pence and 51 pence sterling. Rod North is the Executive Director of Bourse Communications. He joins us now to talk finance and business. Rod, good morning. Good morning. First of all, your response to the news that Ben Bernanke has been reappointed? Well, I don't think it's come as too much of a surprise. And I think in these sorts of economic times, it's better to have stability and at least know that the person heading up the ship as the Federal Reserve Chairman is, is going to be consistent in going forward. So no surprises there. And talking about going forward, the reporting season here has been a little better than expected? Yes, it has been. I think what uh, we've really seen, and we're coming to the end of it uh, in the next few days, by the end of the month, that'll be the end of it. And most of the companies that leave it to last probably haven't got uh, too much uh, to say that's any good. But <laughs> right. what we've seen to date is generally people have companies have reported uh, results that are better than expected. So it's followed a similar trend in the US and in Europe where about 70% of the companies have reported better earnings than expected in terms of their guidance figures that they recently you know, put out to the market earlier. Now, Rod, uh, we know that you like to track markers, both uh, unusual and common, when it comes to the state of the economy. So what does the number of initial public offerings that are coming up tell us, do you think? Well, that's a very interesting sign because it's been a rare bird. We haven't seen initial public offerings uh, coming to the market, which is a transition of private companies to public companies uh, for some time, really 2000 2007 was really the last major uh, you know, group of, of listings that we saw and in 2008 and 2009 we've only seen a couple of billion dollars go into that uh, area and now we're seeing a number of companies lining up. If you go onto the ASX website you'll see a number of companies there. We've got carsales.com coming up which is going to be quite a big float and there's further talk now about uh, Maya listing which will be interesting and that'll be a two billion dollar float. So what it's really indicating is that uh, at the smaller end of the market uh, there is a lot of interest coming back in for people to invest mm. in these companies that will then you know, list on the Australian uh, Securities Exchange. Yeah, so these big companies just believe now that, that people have a lot more money or a bit of money at least to throw around. Well, I think there's a bit more confidence there and a lot of people sat in cash uh, and I think now that there's a feeling that you know, recovery is starting to uh, show some signs of, of kicking in, people are thinking, well, maybe we really start, we, we need to start and put some of that money into shares as well as having some cash and fixed interest and property. Talking of markers, June D GDP figures released next week. Yes, that's uh, something that people ha haven't commented on for some time because there's a bit of a delayed effect, yeah. you know, to get the June figures out in, uh, in August, or in fact it'll be in September because it'll be next Wednesday. And I think economists and uh, commentators are pretty divided as to whether that could be negative or positive. What do you think? I think it, we, we could just see a positive figure because I think we're still at the tail end of the fiscal stimulus which benefited up to June so it's really perhaps going to be the September quarter which will be the one to watch in terms of whether that's mm. negative or not but again we still haven't seen you know two or unlikely to see two quarters of negative growth consecutively. And this interesting news this morning that China has for the first time become the world's biggest exporter um, outstripping Germany. I'm surprised Germany w was still up there. Well, yeah, I think that came as a surprise too. And I mean, what we've seen uh, with Germany is they've just reported uh, a positive uh, figure for growth as well for the quarter, which effectively means they're out of recession. So, but I think, you know, the sheer weight of numbers in China, you know, will continue, continue to drive, uh, you know, that growth from China's export point of view. So unfortunately, Germany really can't compete in the numbers mm. game because we've got one and a half billion people in China. Mm. I think it all gets down to numbers at the end of the day. <laughs> <laughs> and Rod, just quickly and finally, your final marker of uh, signs of recovery or at least signs of success? Always a good sign. Yes, the weddings market is booming. <laughs> it's a $3 billion industry and people on average are spending $32,000. Can you believe that? On average, $32,000 a wedding. A wedding. And that figure has continued all the way through this you know, so-called you know, fake recession. Absolutely. The only thing that's happened is people who've been able to delay their weddings have, but what people that are committed have got to stick with the date. Yeah, that's right. Well, you've got to be committed. Don't you have to be committed. <laughs> Don't destroy the fantasy. Absolutely. Rod North, good to see you. Thank good you. To see you.